next presentation is from Finland. Finland is known and reputed to be one of the countries in the world where uh, screening programs have worked the best. And uh, they are now going to tell us about cervical precancer and cancer rates after primary HPV test <coughs> versus cytology within one screening run. This is yet another randomized trial from Finland. So thank you for this great opportunity. Uh, there, there are my disclosures. So uh, I've research, I received research grant for my doctor thesis, actually not for this special work. And here's my topic. Uh, this is uh, data that was recently published in the British Medical Journal last week. It, uh, it's an open access article, so any of you who is interested is free to uh, obtain these results from the website. And cervical cancer is preventable through regular screening, but it still remains an important public health problem. Uh, in Finland, we have this organized uh, cervical cancer screening ongoing for over 40 years, and the situation in our countries is good in compared to many other countries. Uh, but the problem, uh, the one problem is that this disease uh, affects rather young women that are still at fertile age, and, and it's known that uh, the treatments have uh, effects on, on uh, for example, the uh, preterm deliveries and, and birth weight. So this is an important issue. And it has been disclaimed that the current screening strategy, strategies have little or no impact on cancer uh, incidence at younger ages. And whenever uh, assessing or, or considering new screening uh, methods, they should be assessed in the, uh, in the uh, population in which they are to be implemented and, and also uh, all the positive outcomes, benefits and the possible harms must be evaluated properly. And this can be best uh, assessed in the, in the context of uh, the overall burden of disease in the population. So we have seen uh, earlier uh, that HPV DNA testing is more sensitive than cytology. It detects more pre-cancers uh, pre than cytology. Mr. Ronko just uh, showed that it is also more uh, effective in preventing cervical cancer. So there's no question about that. But, uh, but whether this earlier detection and, and better efficacy, uh, what is the price to pay? Uh, is there a substantial increase in the uh, pre-cancers detected, uh, follow-up tests needed, colposcopies done, treatments needed? And, and we aim to uh, assess this uh, uh, the number of pre-cancers in the Finnish healthcare system. And there were two randomized groups that were followed over one screening uh, round of five years. So these uh, results are based on the first screening route uh, in compared to those results uh, previously presented by Mr. Ranko that included also the second screening route. A few words about Finnish uh, HPV screening trial. Uh, in Finland, we have this organized cervical cancer screening program that, uh, in which every woman are personally invited by invitation letter to attend cervical screening in every five years. And uh, we have had HPV screening trial ongoing since 2003. So we started to HPV testing at the time when, when uh, all the other trials used uh, co-testing or the HPV as a tri triaging of ASCUS uh, results. And, and in the cervical screening program, it is of utmost importance to maintain the high specificity because most of the people are healthy. We are, we are screening uh, normal, healthy people. 
and only the mi minor part of them have some abnormalities. And we, we thought that it would be rational to start uh, HPV screening by, by offering the HPV uh, as a primary test and then cytology as a reflex test for HPV positives. And that's the, uh, our in intervention arm. And, and then the conventional uh, cytology, the conventional pap smear is the control arm. And uh, the person, uh, the women were invited with similar invitation letter in both groups. And, and the screening visit, the screening method was disclosed. So uh, they could decline from the HPV test and, and got the PAP test instead. But uh, any informed consent was not needed because it, this was a, a, a cervical a screening service afforded uh, then. And, and the, deci the decision to accept the HPV test was considered as acceptance to participate in the trial. And uh, in the first three years of the trial, we had the modified Papa Nicolau class classification in use. And by that time, the PAP classes uh, three, four, and five uh, means instant referral for colposcopy. And from year 2006 onwards, we had the Bethesda system and then uh, the LCL or worse indicated instant referral. And uh, PAP class two and, and later on ASCUS were indicated, uh, indicated rescreening, a recommendation for rescreening in one to two years. And also, uh, women that were HPV DNA test positive at the initial screening visit were also recommended for, for intensive screening. Uh, during the study, that during the uh, follow-up period, there were also opportunistic pap smears among those women who participated, and also for those who didn't. So we followed up the woman from the uh, uh, from the invitation, which was. Uh, by the, uh, uh, at, the end of, uh, at the beginning of the calendar year, and we followed up then up to cervical lesion, uh, death or emigration, and uh, five, five years since the initial invitation and randomization, or December, uh, the last of December 2008. Uh, we used three independent uh, healthcare registries to obtain all the possible cervical lesions registered in Finland. We use the Finnish Cancer Registry, which is uh, vertically complete as a means of invasive cervical cancer diagnosis. And also CAN3 and adenocarcinoma in, in situ diagnosis are registered. Uh, then we use the uh, mass screening re re registry, which is a screening database and includes all the screening visits and and uh, colposcopies and uh, diagnosis, uh, cervical diagnosis uh, detected in the program. And then uh, the third register was this care register for, for, so, for social welfare and health care, which is uh, uh, HDR in this context. And this is a a uh, uh, register that has hospital uh, admissions and discharges, and also uh, day pressure outpatient uh, visits. So, so the, uh, by using these three registers, we, we could uh, obtain almost all the cervical, disease, uh, cervical diagnosis done in the, uh, Finland during this period. And we assessed the uh, uh, hazard ratios or re detection ratios uh, for HPV screening versus cytology screening by Poisson regression and also estimated the five yearly cumulative hazard by Nelson Allen estimator. And here's the flow chart for the years 2003 and 2007. So we had uh, Altogether, a little bit over 203,000 women who were 
eligible for screening and randomization. Uh, here you can see that a few of them were excluded because they got a cervical uh, diagnose or, or other reason for end of follow-up before the exact uh, start of the follow-up. So a uh, little bit over 101,000 women per study arm of which about Sixty-five percent attended in the HPV arm and in the control arm. Here you can see the uh, total uh, person years at risk for for cervical cancer and for pre-cancer. So we allowed women to to get pre-cancer diagnosed during the follow-up, and also uh, it was possible to get a cervical cancer diagnosed uh, in addition. Therefore, there are two different uh, person years for different outcomes. And altogether, there were two, uh, 1,010 uh, cervical lesions in the HPV arm and 701 in the uh, pap test arm. And uh, the figure shows how they are divided by the status at the initial screening visit. So there were uh, almost equal number of lesions detected uh, instantly after the screening visit and then uh, this follow-up is a bit bad word here but it should be need for intensive screening so these groups in the middle are those who were recommended for intensive screening to somewhat abnormal result at the initial screening visit and this is uh, the group of women who got a negative result at the initial screening visit. And, and the last column here is the woman who didn't attend. Because this was a register-based register study, we, we had uh, we had chance to, to follow also the diagnosis for those women who did not participate, participate in the program. And here are the hazard ratios. So, uh, considering all the uh, screening population, all women invited, uh, there were uh, 1.32 uh, hazard ratio for detection of CIN3 or ACE, which is uh, considered to be, be the, the most uh, closest surrogate for, for invasive cancer as a means of uh, uh, detecting precancers. And of course, among those women who attended, the, the hazard ratios are slightly higher than, than in the population of all women invited. And uh, almost uh, similar detection rates for the CIN1 and CIN2 lesions uh, in HPV screening compared to cytology screening in one point. Uh, five three and one point five four among all women invited, and then if you if we look at those hazard ratios by the initial screening status, so here uh, among those who were instantly referred for a colposcopy, uh, one point eight one hazard ratio for detection of CIN three or adenocarcinoma in situ. Uh, then women that were recommended for intensive screening, almost three for, for HPV screening versus cytology. And this, what we have heard already many times before, after negative test, sli uh, clearly less CIN3 cases detected that, uh, with uh, HPV DNA test than with cytology. Uh, we all, uh, in the uh, original paper, we also have uh, calculated these hazard ratios by age groups uh, from age 25 to 34 years old and, and for 35 years and older. And for example, this uh, CIN3 lesions uh, among colposcopy 
referrals, it was 1.50 uh, for 25 to 34-year-olds. Uh, this figure here was 4.61 for, uh, for, for that younger age group. And, and the protection af uh, after negative test was actually even more lower. It was 0 0.22, so 0 0.22 after negative test in the HPV screening arm versus cytology. And here in the figure you can see the cumulative rates so this first one is for the CIN3 or adenocarcinoma in situ. And, and uh, the colors are probably not that clear, but this first curve here is the HPV test among the younger age group, which means under the age of 35. Uh, green line is the same age group for, uh, for cytology. Uh, here, uh, among women older than uh, 35 years old or older, for the HPV screening and for cytology screening. Uh, here below are the confidence li limits uh, for the figures for uh, 10,000 person years. May I go conclusions? Quickly. So the figures are from the article and the conclusions. The primary HPV screening resulted in more precancers. A uh, large number of the lesions were detected in women under 35 years old, and this was substantially more common by HPV testing than by cytology. Uh, however, the absolute difference in cumulative rates uh, seen three or eight was was uh, small between study arms, and, and this just did, just just that uh, by, by carefully selecting age groups and uh, screening intervals, the overall disease burden may be uh, increased only slightly. So, thanks. Thank you for your attention.